Good morning fellow option traders. This is Jeff and welcome to the Daily Scan for Wednesday, May 27th, 2015. Well, it's good to be back in the saddle again, as they say. Um, I, the cold that I started last week is still lingering, but getting slightly better. Just changing, changing as it moves through uh, my body, I guess you might say. Uh, okay, so today we don't have really any forecasted market affecting announcements here. Um, yesterday we had a bunch of them actually, and I didn't really look at them. Apparently they weren't good because the market didn't like it. So durable good orders uh, came in a little bit better. They expected a minus 0.6, it was minus 0.5. Okay, I guess that's good. Uh, home pricing index, eh, kind of in line, I guess you could say. Uh, new home sales, uh, in line. Can't hardly say anything about that. Dallas Fed Manufacturing Survey, whoa going into the digger and I'm not sure how the market reacted intraday but the rest of the week a uh, few it's not for really very busy at all I see that the end of last week was not like Friday's reports when I went to take a peek at them they weren't all that pretty either all right let's take a look at the futures Asia kind of mixed to flat I guess you could say and Europe is very bullish right now so that's I guess that's pretty good pretty good indicator for us so let's see what is going on here over in the US looking a little positive a little bit more than yesterday I was got a chance to watch it most of the day yesterday was travel coming from uh, Pacific time zone to Eastern time zone pretty much blew the whole day uh, let's see darkness came early but that was okay because we were kind of uh, strung out from the whole vacation and it was good to get uh, get to bed a little bit earlier last night uh, what else is going on here VIX is at 1406 and in case you're interested or were wondering, Vivix is sort of the VIX of the VIX, or all the VIXs, or I don't, I'm not sure how to explain this. I don't follow it, so I don't know how to explain it. This is the Dow VIX, the S&P 500 VIX, the NASDAQ VIX, and the Russell VIX. And this is put-call ratio. Uh, <clears throat> All right, uh, gold, 1186. Hasn't been doing too well since I've been gone. Down a little bit. Oil is down a tad from the last time we were together. The dollar, 97, 285, and the euro, U.S. dollars at a dollar nine. Wasn't it like around dollar 13 or so, if I remember right? That's not looking so hot. All right, so um, you're seeing a little bit different view here than before. I, uh, you know, I put those butterflies on for insurance that I was talking about, and I didn't get them split out because, if you remember, it said we had um, uh, verticals and and then just regular underlines. In the, in the last time you looked at this, well now uh, I was uh, working with, uh, it wasn't working, it wasn't showing my butterflies, so I called up Thinkorswim Technical Support, and it turns out they don't really support that, and it was kind of an accident that I was even seeing the verticals before separated out. So... Um, they said that they would uh, 
put this into the development team as an enhancement because I said you should be able to see it with this view. And the view that I was talking about was right here, group by, I wanted to group by account. And he said that if you group it by account, it won't break it out. And I said, well, it sort of was before. And I believe it was before, but I don't know if I had multiple accounts when I was doing all that weird kind of trading, so I'm not sure about that. So if you group it by account, you're going to lose your verticals and, and calendars and iron condors and stuff like that split out. So that's what happens there. So I wanted to see all accounts, so I'm going to have to live with this, but I pretty much know what almost everything is anyway. And here is that uh, the SPY, S-P-Y, the ETF. And remember, I would only do this in an IRA. And the reason why is because for uh, reporting purposes at the end of the year to the IRS, you have to report each individual trade on each individual contract. And that's just a little bit, uh, I don't want to deal with that. So we're doing all cash indexes and all the other ones, except for this down here in NAVB. These are regular accounts. These are IRAs. Okay, so um, what do we got here? We have a lot of positive delta. And so therefore, what do we have? We have uh, bull puts. On a lot of stuff. Some of this is almost negative delta or um, neutral, delta neutral almost, but it, part of it's because they're pretty far out too. I think SPXPM is out in regular June expiration. So this week we're going to be looking to do what? We're going to be looking to do probably bull puts again on uh, the cash indexes and this week it'll be on SPX all right so first let's look at our big chart here's the big chart okay um, this is a weekly this is the iron condor the one iron condor that we have and this is uh, bull put on a 10 delta this one was totally successful so the iron condors are in magenta I guess you would call that so I used to do some consulting for T-Mobile and that would be the proper way to call that color magenta um, and then this is just a regular bull put with it that I did with a 10 delta so that pretty much covers almost all these trades here except for this trade on the SPY. Let's take a look at that on the Analyze tab. SPY. All I did was the... Um, let's, just, let's just show positions. So all I did was... Um, the put side. I didn't do the one on the call side, so I did two on the put side, and this is what the risk profile looks like. And here, uh, hide positions. No, I don't want to hide. I want to hide simulations. There we go. Oh boy. Uh, this, these are the actual positions here. Did two of them within his shorts are at 194. Uh, is that right? Yeah, and at 202. That's right, yeah, so um, did it in two accounts, which is why there I have two 202s and two 194s. So that's what the risk profile looks like. It's that good old insurance policy. I forget exactly how much I paid for it. You know, it wasn't very much. But it was $139 for the whole thing. So we just got some insurance sitting out there for two accounts. All right. 
back to our big graph. Let's take a look at the daily. All right, yesterday was a tough day, but not all that bad. And we're still in pretty good shape. I mean, if you're looking overall from a weekly perspective, it looks pretty safe. So, for the sake of brevity, I am not going to do an official scan, but we will run through these quickly on the charts and see uh, what's going on here. So, we'll kick it off with Apple here. And we'll just kind of really zip through these. Apple participated in the market yesterday. Amazon, still not doing anything. Baidu, uh, in a new uptrend, and if you want, well, let's see, I don't like the weekly. Not liking the weekly there at all. Uh, still looks like a, a pretty good downtrend on the weekly, so if I was to do anything here, I would say, you know what, I, wanna, I would go not with a 50 delta, but maybe a 20 delta on the bear call side. That's what I would do. All right. Chipotle still not looking strong at all 20 delta territory there with a uh, bear call Costco uh, not looking very strong but has earnings coming up so we don't want to you don't want to it was that earnings did they already have it 27th okay it happens to be today after the market. There's the Dow. Uh, gold. Mm, it was looking pretty good until last week. Google. I don't know what to say about Google either. If I was a betting man, I would bet on the bear call side with a 20 delta. It's just not enough movement for 50 deltas just not enough uh, don't know what LinkedIn is doing it hasn't made up its mind yet see there's just no movement out here NDX is still sticking to its channel that we show here on the weekly and uh, looks to be maybe doing a temporary bearish move here could be we have a PPS down arrow Netflix uh, not doing anything either price line it's all flatlining everything is flatlining it's unbelievable Russell participated in yesterday's bear move SPX of course did too we already looked at that one and then we'll just jump right down to Tesla. Uh, Tesla is drifting upwards. At least it's doing something. But it's only drifting. It's not really a honking move, in my opinion. So, uh, yeah, vacation was very good in Arizona. Um, my sister-in-law and her husband were very good hosts. We had a nice time and uh, got to see uh, their daughter and their granddaughters so that was nice and got in around the golf which I haven't played golf in 15 years and I did pretty good I must have forgot everything I was doing wrong so I guess that's a good thing about stepping back and reassessing I didn't do any reassessing over the last 15 years but I was, I was asked uh, pretty frequently, do you golf? Do you golf? Well, I used to, uh, but I don't anymore. My sport now is tennis when I can get out there and play it. It's a lot less expensive and more fun and doesn't take up so much time. Okay, so uh, that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Again, it's good to be back. Have a great day and happy trading.